I'm absolutely delighted to be here on behalf of the Scottish Government and I'm equally delighted to see so many uh, of you here uh, and thank you for taking time in what I know are your very busy schedules to engage in what is a really important discussion uh, this morning. When I arrived, Trevor, uh, who it's great to have here as well, said that it felt as if everybody uh, who ran Scotland was in this room right now. So uh, that's a fairly good accolade uh, and probably uh, reasonably accurate as well. I, I told him I would pass that back to the First Minister uh, <laughs> later on. <laughs> Uh, we, uh, as, as Kalyani has said, we face great challenges across uh, the public sector in finding the most effective means to deliver public services in what is undoubtedly a climate of unprecedented economic and financial pressure. Uh, and as part of that, uh, we know uh, very well that we must find ways to meet and, where possible, uh, stem the demand for services. Uh, demand which, with our demographic and without intervention, is only going to grow in the, the years to come. And that's why the Scottish Government has very uh, deliberately embarked on a programme of public sector reform and public service redesign, uh, and why we've made very substantial provision in our budgetary uh, decisions to shift the focus of interventions and spend away from uh, reacting to problems uh, and towards the prevention of those problems. And there's no doubt that key to the success of these moves is understanding, uh, engaging with and responding to the needs and aspirations of service users and communities. And as such, this morning I want to focus on how the public sector equality duty will help us to meet these challenges, because I believe it will help us to meet these challenges and to secure what I know is a shared aim of achieving the outcomes that really matter uh, to people who are served by our public services. People in Scotland, and you know, I, I don't argue that this makes us unique, but it's certainly the case that people in Scotland attach a very high uh, value and a very high priority to their public services. Uh, they, uh, and certainly this is a, a view shared by the Scottish Government, understand that those services and the quality and the equity of those services are the bedrock of both a fair society and a prosperous society. Uh, the public sector also has, uh, in my view, a vital role to play in helping the economy emerge from the worst effects of recession. Uh, very often in uh, discussions about the economy and the recession, the public sector is often uh, pitched as, as part of the problem. Uh, in my view, it's very much uh, part of the solution, the power of public services to enhance people's quality of life and to improve economic opportunity is always important, but never uh, more so than it is in the challenging times that we live in uh, just now. The Christie Commission, uh, of which, as we've heard, Kalyani was a member, endorsed the government's uh, approach to public services, the approach we've uh, taken since 2007, including the major shift of emphasis towards outcome, outcomes and the centrality of community planning. And through our response to the Christie Commission, we've set a very clear direction of travel for public sector reform. Uh, that's a, a direction of travel that challenges all public services to reshape, uh, to integrate and to deliver improved outcomes for people. Our proposed equality duties are designed uh, to chime with that and to support that approach. They are very much focused on outcomes and they encourage the integration of equality considerations in the core business of public authorities. Our reform agenda is built around four pillars. Uh, the four pillars are integration, improved performance, workforce development and prevention. Uh, on integration, uh, public service organisations uh, will be expected to go further on collaboration uh, and move well beyond uh, the sharing of services. Uh, building on the achievements we've already seen in the past four years, uh, there will be a sharpening of the focus of public services on place, 
on making sure that all public services are working together to serve the needs of people in particular communities. And that means that what we know and understand of our communities will become ever more crucial um, in that context. We will undoubtedly need to be better at gathering and using information about the diversity of our communities, engaging with the very wide range of interests and understanding people's different experiences in order that we can shape and improve access to and delivery of public services. And the emphasis in the proposed specific equality duties on outcomes, gathering and using information and on engagement will help to ensure that these very important considerations are woven into the reform agenda. Uh, different models of collaboration and integration are, of course, not just possible, uh, but necessary. And they should be appropriate to local circumstances. I, I don't uh, believe, and I'm sure uh, nobody here does, in a one-size-fits-all approach. Uh, however, we do recognise that as we collaborate and share more in terms of services, uh, we need to consider uh, how to increase our capacity for developing shared outcomes, information, analysis, uh, an element of which is our capacity around equality analysis and assessment. Uh, and that means that greater investment in the people who deliver services through enhanced workforce development is key and is another of the, the four pillars of our reform agenda. Their expertise, energy, creativity uh, can help to shape what is an evolving programme of renewal and improvement. Uh, we have, as a government, done our utmost and will continue to do everything we can to safeguard frontline posts by uh, pursuing, for example, responsible pay restraint in the public sector. Uh, that approach has given uh, many public sector workers stability and job security at a time of huge economic uncertainty. But as we move forward in, in reshaping what we do and developing different ways of working, then those working in the delivery of services uh, do need to be supported to embrace the new environment. Uh, as we move forward with change, it is therefore essential to ensure that all decisions that we take are fair and soundly based. The process of equality analysis and assessment can help to ensure uh, that they are uh, sound and fair. And it's for that reason that the proposed regulations will continue the requirement for equality impact assessment. The third pillar of the reform agenda is our commitment to creating an open, transparent and very rigorous performance and improvement culture within our public services. And that sits alongside the simplification programme and the streamlining of the public body's landscape, uh, the details of which I, I know will be familiar to you and are exemplified uh, by the current restructuring of the police and fire services. Uh, I'm very aware that much has been done in recent years to improve our performance through, for example, best value and the development of effective self-assessment. Uh, but we're also keen to ensure that external scrutiny uh, like audits and inspections, support public service reform and drive better performance, that they drive continuous improvement in performance. And a critical element of performance, of course, is measurement. Uh, and in the context of equality, we're uh, deeply conscious, and I'm deeply conscious, certainly in the, the context of the NHS, of the uh, relative lack of data and information that we have in some areas. Uh, with the range of characteristics now protected in legislation, we understand uh, that improvements are needed in the data that we have and also in how we use that data. That's a really important issue for us and we're again engaged across a range of activities to improve the data and information that we have and we're uh, working also, uh, for example, with the Improvement Service and the Commission to look at improving local data. And as part of our thinking about how we can further help public authorities uh, to meet the new duties, we're planning a new web-based resource on Scottish equality data and evidence. And that will be designed to make information on equality uh, much more easily accessible and available, 
uh, and I think could have a vital role to play in helping public authorities to understand the position of equality groups and equality communities in Scotland. And that new resource uh, will be available in the <coughs> spring of this year. The fourth and final element of our public service reform agenda is, as I've already mentioned, prevention. In many ways, in my view, it's the most important uh, pillar uh, because how successful we are in the prevention side of things will determine to uh, a large extent the sustainability of our public services into the future. Uh, shifting the focus of interventions and spending uh, away from the reactive and much more to prevention uh, with the objective of reducing demand, uh, tackling issues much earlier in the process uh, and helping to provide, uh, as I said, more sustainable public services is absolutely crucial uh, and without a shadow of a doubt, in my mind, one of the biggest challenges we face uh, within many of our public services like the health service individually uh, but collectively across the public sector as a whole. Uh, our spending review identified uh, significant funding, significant funding uh, at any time but uh, particularly significant funding in the financial uh, context we live in, uh, identified funding to give a real impetus to the transition towards prevention across public services. Our focus will uh, initially be on supporting adult social care at uh, early years and tackling reoffending. With and this for me is, is crucial, with specific funding that will only be available for joint working across institutional boundaries and sectors. Uh, and we expect that in addition to the statutory agencies, the third sector and communities themselves will be engaged and realise, as the Christie Commission highlighted, that equality considerations need to be an integral part of that approach. Over the next three years, uh, we intend to provide uh, strong leadership and ensure that the pace of change is maintained. Uh, our clear direction will be an unrelenting focus on improving outcomes uh, for people and for communities across Scotland uh, and a stress for all of our communities. Now, as I've Flagged up uh, on several occasions uh, throughout my remarks so far, we see the consideration of equality uh, as an integral part of our business and a key part of our programme of modernisation, change and progress. The new public sector equality duty and the specific duties that will support it in Scotland run with the grain of developments in Scotland. And I believe very strongly that they will help us in the tasks that we face. Uh, I'm grateful to all of you uh, and others outside this room for contributing to the consultation and it's heartening to know that there is strong support for the approach uh, that we have proposed. Equality matters uh, and I uh, think that uh, quite simple statement uh, is one that we uh, should never fail to remind ourselves of. Equality matters because it's about the kind of society that we want to live in, one without prejudice and discrimination, one that's free from sectarianism uh, or hate crime, a society where people genuinely have the opportunity to achieve their potential, whatever that might be, to contribute to the economy and to participate in society. The duty casts public authorities uh, rightly as agents of change, as service providers, employers, leaders, uh, we all have the ability to influence the life chances of individuals in our communities. That's a huge uh, responsibility, but also a huge privilege and opportunity. Uh, we have the power and the ability to enable people to overcome the barriers that can so often hold them back. The public sector equality duty requires us to have due regard to the need to eliminate unlawful discrimination advance equality of opportunity and foster good relations. It's absolutely <coughs> at the heart of what public authorities are about, at the heart of what they do, how they operate, uh, at the heart of their culture and their very purpose. Uh, Scottish ministers, of course, have the power to set out further specific duties which will enable the better performance of the public sector equality duty. 
And in Scotland, again, uh, these specific duties are intended to run with the grain of public service reform. Uh, they build on recent progress, but help to further force the pace of change. Uh, there has been a long-standing desire uh, to bring equality from the margins into the mainstream and into the core business of what public authorities do. The specific duties will help us to do that. There are a package of requirements that are designed to chime with the business of public service, focusing on outcomes, uh, linking to the functions of the authority, supporting good employment practice, helping to ensure fair and sound decision making and reporting in concert with existing practice through public reporting mechanisms. Uh, we expect to make the regulations in March and they will come into force in the late spring and that of course follows consultation last year on draft regulations. I know that Lynn from the Commission, uh, the statutory body for equality legislation and with whom we've worked uh, very closely in the development of the regulations will provide some detail later on this morning on what's proposed but in summary and very briefly our proposed duties will require authorities to set equality outcomes, undertake impact assessment make progress on gathering and using employment information, uh, draw on evidence, including that gained from the involvement and engagement with communities, and report on progress through, where possible, public performance reporting mechanisms. We'll also introduce a minister's duty that will require uh, my colleagues and I to take an overview of how progress on the duty is being achieved in Scotland. <laughs> Uh, and to set out uh, proposals that are designed to help the delivery of the quality duties right across the public sector. So just to uh, sum up and conclude, our aim through both the equality duty and our work on public service reform is to promote the successful and sustainable transformation of communities by ensuring that people's life chances are improved and are not diminished because of the barriers that they face. Uh, I think we've got a real opportunity to make a big difference in the period ahead. Uh, I'm very optimistic that the creativity, the energy, commitment and care that characterise and always have characterised our public services in Scotland will be used to forge services that can work effectively and efficiently for all of our communities, those who rely on them in the here and now, but crucially allow our public services uh, to change and transform themselves to make sure that they continue to deliver for generations to come. Thank you very much and I hope you enjoy the rest of the session.